What's going on guys? I'm going to start off by saying that this is not the easiest market to trade. Um, we're going to go over some setups. We're going to go over some things that maybe, you know, we could do better in this current market environment, current market cycle, some things that maybe we need to watch for and, you know, go over some of the setups that I did take today. Now, the market is not the easiest to trade right now because of a couple of things. For one, if we go back kind of a week, two weeks, three weeks even, some of these ranges are extremely big. So when you're looking at a five minute candle, 60, 70, 80, 90, even 100 points, in a singular five minute candle, it makes managing risk that much more hard. And when it's hard to manage risk, it lowers the confidence level down in your strategy and in your ability to execute in a proper manner, okay? So when you lack that confidence, you lack the execution times and speed, and then it can kind of throw things off because now you get into this, you know, this kind of hamster wheel effect where you're kind of cherry picking trades. I don't really want to take this trade because it doesn't look like the market's going to work out. And then you try to cherry pick another play and then the market does work out. And then you give yourself false sense of hope and confidence because you're all over the place. So a couple of pieces of advice that I can offer right now is regardless of, of what's going on in the market and how the market is reacting on a day in and day out basis, we have to remain consistent in a couple of things. We have to remain consistent in our time window where we show up to trade. So for myself, I'm here in California, Pacific Standard Time. My trade window is going to be between 630 in the morning and around 839 a.m. OK, so for two and a half, maybe even three hours I'm going to look for those active trade setups. I'm going to try to hammer those trades when I get that opportunity to take those trades for good or bad. So, you know, if I go down and I happen to take some red trades, it doesn't mean that I'm going to sit here until the end of close to try to get back those wins. We're going to have to close it up. We're going to have to come back tomorrow. We're going to have to repeat the process. OK, the same rules apply if I'm able to scratch off a few winners. OK, if I'm able to take two or three winning trades in that window as well. I'm not going to tell myself, well, you know, if I stick around a little bit longer and I take that one more trade, maybe I, you know, make 500 more bucks or, or something, right? We don't do that, okay? Be consistent in the time window that you're looking to trade. We also have to be consistent in our strategy and the setups that we're taking, okay? We, we cannot be bouncing around. We can't follow our strategy on one particular setup that trade loses and then now we tell ourselves well i need to scalp and get back to break even you know let me go let me let me just try to get in and get out just to get back that loss and then when i get my setup again i'll take it again we can't do that okay we we just can't yes sometimes we're able to scratch and crawl and and claw our way out of of a of a red day by doing those type of things but what it's going to do is it's going to create very, very bad habits for the future because your brain is going to associate with losing a trade, just scalp and crawl your way back out. You've done it before, you could do it again, okay? Now, I would say the odds of you being able to take, you know, a red trade into a green trade into a green day, it's 50-50%, right? It's like flipping a coin. Some days we're gonna be able to do it, some days we're not. But when we're not able to do it, I'm gonna tell you that's what's that what is going to happen. And what is going to happen is that you're going to over trade in a manner where you're either going to blow up an account, you're going to lose an evaluation, you're going to lose a funded account, and you're going to drive yourself absolutely up the wall. Okay, so we need to keep stress levels down during the trading day session. Okay, it's like the saying, right, when times are rough. They won't be rough forever, something like that, right? You guys get what the analogy I'm trying to use, right? When when you have a bad day, it doesn't mean every single day is going to be bad. It doesn't necessarily mean that every single day, you know, the market's going to be choppy or the ranges are going to be huge. Yeah, maybe it's going to be like that for a few days. Maybe it's going to be like that for a week. Maybe it's going to be like that for a couple of weeks. But you're going to be able to come out the other side as long as you're doing everything correctly. Now, if we kind of get into the charts here, I want to show you a couple of things because there was a lot of chop early in the market where the market was essentially barcoding for the better half of an hour, okay? A better half of an hour. So if we look at the initial open, 
we have an initial down move comes right back into supply in the supply zones that I have on my chart is, is the 20 day moving average. It's the 200 day moving average. It's the 50 day moving average. We bounce back into these areas. We kind of chop around and we come back down to the, to the lower half. We come back up, we come back down, we wash out this level and then we do push up higher. Um, so it makes it extremely difficult because it gets you in a pattern where you're looking to go short here. No, you're looking to go long. Now you're looking to go short. Now you're looking to go long. And yes, you might win a couple of these trades, but you're also going to lose a couple of these trades. And then you come out of this, you know, one hour period and it's like, what the hell just happened? Right? So in this market, it's a see green, take green environment. Okay. And in, in this market, it's going to take a lot more common sense and a lot more feel okay a lot more intuition a lot more instincts than it is actual strategy it's going to take a little bit more skill set a little bit more skills or having that skill set to be able to read price and get that feel of the market to try to get green and get out okay because let me show you something that's going on here now our first trade of the day here 620 this is leading into the market open you have a nice 20 SMA play here on a five minute time frame. We have support sitting down here at the 50. There's well more than five, 10 points worth of potential here. So we could take that trade into the market open, just kind of wrap it up, get green. Now, if we wait for the market to open, we don't get that next setup until around 15 minutes off the open. Now, when we get this setup 15 minutes off the open on a five minute time frame, the next candle never confirms. Okay, so there is no entry here. So although it looks like a good opportunity, okay, it looks like a good opportunity where this could potentially break to the upside and take out those pre-market highs, it fails. And when it fails, it comes right back down on a 41 point range candle. And when this candle confirms, I wanna give you an example here. The low price was 19,580. The next candle goes down to 19,575 and a half okay so not even five points so when you're looking at this type of situation you could have entered the trade perfectly missed a five point take profit by a tick or two and then it reverses on you and because the range is big and the chop is extravagant you could have essentially been in this trade that worked against you almost 20, 25 points. So depending on the amount of size that you're trading, you could have actually gotten stopped out of this trade, which eventually worked on the next candle, okay? So at 7 a.m., it eventually worked and did give you that five to 10 points. So how, how do we get around that, right? How, how, do we, how do we kind of navigate that? There's only one real thing that you can do, okay? And that's to size down. And I've mentioned this before, and I, I, I talk about it a lot, but example, case in point, even if we risked the whole one bar, okay, the whole one bar, and we traded two micros, the most we're giving up here is around $160 on this trade. That's the most we're going to lose if we risk the entirety of the, the, the reason why candle to the short side of a 40-point range, okay? So $160 is our potential risk, but if we start to look at it, if we're going to be scalping and we're going to take five points or even 10 points on two micros, that risk to reward ratio is, is very, very skewed. Okay, so it's very, very skewed, meaning that if you're taking this trade on two micro contracts at around five points, you're essentially looking at a $20 win for $160 loss that the numbers aren't really making sense, right? So that's where it starts to get very, very difficult because not only do we not want to risk something that's that skewed, we want to make a little bit more money to make it worth it, right? So in this particular situation, right now, in this current market environment, the one adjustment that I could see us having if we're not going to size down to, to micros is to... On a, and although five points is not a lot, maybe right now, a three to four point take profit might be more beneficial, right? Is that going to be the case in a week or two? Maybe, maybe not. 
but right now it could be beneficial so if you are trading on the mini side of things or five micro contracts six micro contracts ten micro contracts because you like to scale in and out then maybe taking three to four points when the market is ranging could be more beneficial now i mentioned this earlier today in evolution traders discord top-down analysis from from the daily chart already had us in an area of supply okay if you go to that daily chart and you look at the 50-day moving average we touched it on friday and until we got outside of friday's high we could expect the market to be choppy so if you came into the market today not expecting this to happen or the market to be a little bit more choppy i guarantee you it's because you forgot or didn't do that top-down analysis from some of those higher time frames okay so when you're coming into a day where you understand the volume could be a little bit lower and you understand that we could maybe be chopping around a little bit the first thing that needs to happen is is we need to get into a see green take green mentality okay we're not going to sit here and look for these extended 20 30 40 point moves we need to see green we need to lock it up and we need to have discipline to come back to the market when the higher time frame charts are actually setting up in our favor okay or we need to adjust this price target down from five points to maybe three to four so if we're trading one mini contract well 20 40 60 dollars a trade versus maybe the hundred dollars a trade we're looking for it might be more beneficial yes less money but also less stress maybe we can take two or three of these trades make 120 180 dollars 150 dollars and then just kind of keep these days rolling right because it's periods like this that happen in the market where price action's not ideal and things are a lot harder and what you were doing three weeks ago is no longer working okay where you need to make those adjustments and again it's not an adjustment that's for the rest of your trading career it's an adjustment for right now right now what's going on is a ranges are big but when our setups are confirming they're not they're not just taking off okay they're kind of wicking us in and then and, and it's going up a couple of points a few points and then coming right back down 20 30 points makes it extremely difficult now i was a little bit more patient today to kind of start the day my first trade didn't come until after the 30 minute opening range and I want to, I want to, this video is getting a little bit long winded and I'll probably make a couple more videos kind of outlining the rest of these trades. I don't want this video to be too long, but I'll kind of leave with that opening range trade. Now go back to the earlier part of this video where I said, it's going to take a little bit of, of, uh, you know, common sense. And it's going to take a little bit of feeling in this market right now, a little bit of instinct in this market right now. Normally I take first break of the opening range nine out of ten times when we have the 30 minute opening range and that price breaks that high or breaks that low i'm going to be in on first jump i'm going to look for my five to ten points and i'm going to see green take green there was an adjustment in real time that was made today a decision a change that was made today why i was not going to take that initial break what was it it was looking at the market from open pull back bounce fail to break highs pull back fail to break lows bounce fail to break highs sweep all of this stuff was indicating that the market was like retail traders like to say choppy okay it was barcoding it was not a lot of sense of direction so immediately that doesn't mean that i'm not going to take a potential 30 minute opening range trade what it means is I'm going to adjust because the market is not showing a lot of follow through to one particular side. I'm not going to take the first move, but I'm going to wait for price to get broken and then wait for a following candle to confirm the new high price over the 30 minute opening range. Does that make sense? So in this particular scenario, if you look at the 30 minute high, right, which is where's, where's the open at? Here's the high. If you look at this high, notice how 
I'm just going to actually put a line here. Notice how price actually at 7.10 in the morning Pacific Standard Time, price actually broke the 30-minute opening range. But I want you to see that if you didn't make that real-time adjustment, again, now, is that to say that, that this adjustment was going to be right? No. Was that to say that this when this that this couldn't have broken this price and, and shot up 50 points, 100 points? No. But I was willing to bet on what I was feeling and what I was seeing, okay? And that's what it what, what it takes to be a trader, okay? I understand that a lot of traders want things set in stone where if if XYZ happens, ABC is going to be the result. That's simply not the case. Your strategy and your methods and means for trading are used as a guide, okay? As a guide. That doesn't mean that there's not shortcuts in that in that guide. That doesn't mean that there's not detours in that guide. And that doesn't mean that there's not adjustments that need to be made in order to protect yourself and keep yourself safe and or try to make some money any way you can, okay? So when you make this decision <clears throat> to not take this 30 minute opening range break on the first attempt, because anyone who did more than likely you got stopped out because the next 10 minutes pulled back and pulled back drastically over a hundred points. You potentially saved yourself from losing some cash. Now, when the market did start to come back up again, we set up a five minute 20 SMA play here at 725. I know a lot of members took this one. It was also a break of the 200 day moving average supply zone as well. Okay. So there also was a little bit of a move here into the 30 minute opening range high as well as pre-market high, right? And this candle at 730, once it confirmed that 30 minute opening range break, that new high was put in here at 19,625 and a half. This candle shot up to 19,633. So this is where I put my money on my first trade. Now, again, if you're thinking, or I guess for the better sake, if you're not thinking and you're just assuming that once we break for the second time that this is gonna shoot up 50, 60, 70, 80 points, then more than likely you lost on this trade as well. But if you don't change your system and you don't change, you know, your price targets just for whatever, and you keep things neutral and you keep things the same, I'm still looking for that five point take profit. Then you could have, you could see here how when we do break that 30 minute opening range high price for the second time, not only does it pay, it does pay for that five points. Okay. It pulls back once more, puts in a higher low. And actually this time holds the 20 SMA. And when it holds the 20 SMA this time, it only it not only bounces off the 20 SMA, takes out the high price, it starts to take out some of this recent uh, pre-market action here, and then shoots up like, like a rocket ship. And it's on these type of plays here where you can try to catch those momentum sc scalps, right? So <clears throat> again, what's the moral of the story? What's the moral of this? You need to figure out what's what's limiting you right now you need to figure out how you're losing why you're losing and you need to make that adjustment if it's because your price target is normally five points seven points ten points and you're not getting that start back testing maybe we need to go for the time being especially early off in the morning when things seem to be a little bit more choppy maybe we need to go to a three to four point take profit if you don't want to do that and you still want to you know, take your five, 10, 15 points, maybe it's sizing down to anywhere between one to three micro contracts. But there's a needs to be an adjustment that needs to be made before we just keep slamming our head against the wall, slamming our head against the wall, doing the same things, repeating the process because it worked last week. <coughs> Excuse me. Or it worked two weeks ago or worked three weeks ago. Just because something was working in, as far as your stop loss or your take profit or the way that the market was moving two or three or four weeks ago doesn't mean that that's still the case right now. Markets are evolving, markets change, market cycles shift. We need to make these adjustments in real time. The same way that I made the adjustment of, I'm not gonna take the first initial break today, but I'm gonna let price break, put in a new high, and then when we confirm the new high, then 
I'm going to take my trade, okay? So there needs to be some type of adjustment that's made because if you sit there and you consistently do the same thing over and over and over, especially if it's not working in this current price action, then how do you expect a, a fine result, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you guys would like to trade with me, that link is down in the description box below. And if you guys need more evaluation accounts with Apex Trader Funding, that link is down in the description box below. You can have up to 20 funded accounts with Apex. I'll see all of you guys on the inside.